Hi there and welcome to the video. Today we're going to look at a fantastic easy way to make creative glows and light blooms in Photopea. Both images used in this video are available for download in the description box below for your own use. For this tutorial we need to quickly add a free plugin. To do this go to the window menu and click plugins. On this screen you should see the Super Bloom by Luna Graphics option. Click on this and on the following screen click the install option. Now exit out of the plugin screen by clicking on the cross in the top right corner. You can see the icon for the Super Bloom plugin appear at the bottom of the bar on this screen. This is where your new plugins will get added to. Make sure that you have the target layer selected and click on the icon which looks like some overlapping triangles. Now we can see the live preview screen and adjustment options. You can enlarge the preview by dragging the bottom left corner outwards. As you can see, there are a few options here, but it's all quite straightforward. The threshold slider controls how much of the image is affected by the glow. At a value of 254, only the very brightest part of the image will have the glow applied. As you move the slider to the left, you will notice increasing amounts of the image will be affected by the glow. I'll just put that back to something a little higher for now, make it a bit more natural. The depth and radius sliders control the strength of the glow on areas designated by the threshold. So in other words, the threshold tells Photo P which areas should have the effect and the depth and radius control by how much that effect applies to the image, if that makes sense. The colorize option allows you to set the glows to a specific single color throughout the image. Opacity adjusts the visibility of that chosen color and not the opacity of the actual glow itself. Hue and saturation, self-explanatory, standard adjustments here, uh, feel free to tweak these to taste. Once you're happy, click add to document and then minimize the plugin window by clicking on the icon again to hide it. Now, as you can see here, we've been supplied with the effect on a separate layer with a blend mode of screen already applied. This is a great feature and it gives us the option to adjust it after the fact by lowering the opacity for example or we could even create and clip a hue saturation to it and tweak the colour after the fact which is really beneficial. Right let's have a look at the plugin on a different image so here I've got um, a picture of a kind of a cyborg sci-fi scene and we can add some drama to this by first darkening the image um, which I'm going to do with just a simple curve and I'm just going to drag the midpoint down on the curve no exact adjustments here just by eye and then I'll probably add a hue saturation and just take a little bit of saturation out the whole image and now we will activate the plugin again and make similar kind of tweaks but on this one I actually can push the bloom further push the, the threshold make the threshold affect more of the image because it's a sci-fi kind of image it's not based on reality so we've got more artistic license on this one I'm just going to play with a couple of these settings until I'm happy and I'll just click add to document now what I want to do here is apply a layer mask to this layer so click the layer mask icon and with a soft brush selected so B for the brush tool just make sure it's nice and soft maybe with an opacity sort of 20 to 30 percent something like that and with black as our foreground color we're now going to gently just paint away the areas on the face where it's spilled too much and contaminated the color a little bit too much like i said you don't want to go all out here and get rid of it all so maybe just leave some around the edges but so that's looking good now but i want to take this to the next level because i want to add a second super bloom um, effect layer on this image because I want the armor in the foreground to have a bit of shine on it as well but I didn't want to try and do that all in one adjustment because then we'd end up compromising the background lights so I'm going to click on the um, cyborg image and just click the super bloom plugin icon again to bring back up a new creation now ignore what it's doing in the background because it's sort of taking into account the glow we've already applied in the background and then boosting it even more so forget that for the moment we're just concentrating on what the armor is looking like in the foreground that shiny chrome armor and we're adjusting purely for that 
So I'm going to drag the sliders around a little bit again, just as earlier, playing around until I get something that I like. Just with a nice little hazy glow around some of the highlight areas. And what I will do on this is take the saturation slider down um, because it's supposed to be a fairly neutral sort of chrome metal armor and I don't really want any color glows on that. So I'm just going to take it down to get a nice sort of glow and then I'm going to click add to document, come back to the main screen. And as you can see, of course, it's added it as a new adjustment layer. So now all we've got to do is create a layer mask on this by clicking on the layer mask icon, pressing command and I to invert the mask. So now that effect's hidden, and all we're seeing is the adjustment that we did the last time that's affected the background lights. And now with the brush tool and the foreground color set to white, we're going to paint this layer in just over where the armor is. So we're just bringing that selective glow into the armor. So what we've ended up with is one image with two separate instances of the super bloom affecting two different elements, and we've got complete control over this. It's really handy and I use this all the time on images since I discovered it and um, I think it's a fantastic plugin.